In this video, I'm gonna be making a custom hand-soldered mechanical keyboard with glorious panda switches, and it's gonna be modeled after the first ever commercial typewriter. This is how I made it. Watch till the end to hear a typing test. It's Halloween again, which means one thing. I have to watch people put these normal, boring, stupid pumpkins on their goddamn porch. No other holiday I can think of has us leaving a piece of fruit on our fucking front door just sitting there and rotting. They don't even taste good. They literally serve no purpose. But this year, I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna turn this normal, boring pumpkin into a custom, tactile, mechanical keyboard. God, maybe they'll actually serve a fucking purpose. Now, you may have noticed that a pumpkin is not a mechanical keyboard based on its lack of USB-C compatibility. But one thing a pumpkin is, is a sphere. You know what else is a sphere? The Mauling Hansen Writing Ball from 1860. The Mauling Hansen Writing Ball was the first ever commercially produced typewriter, and as the name would suggest, it was in the shape of a ball. Now, a typewriter is just an old-timey keyboard, so I'm thinking I'll just take the design of the Mauling Hansen Writing Ball and just jam it into this pumpkin. But like, why am I doing this? Every year, DigiKey and AliWeber come together and do something called the Hack a Pumpkin Challenge, where they challenge everyone to just do something with a pumpkin. The rules are very loose, but every year I participate, I tend to put some kind of electronics in mind. Last year, I made a flamethrower pumpkin to burn children, and this year, I'm making a mechanical keyboard. Now, in order to get my computer to recognize the pumpkin as a keyboard, I'm gonna need to use a microcontroller in between the key switches and the computer. The microcontroller I decided to go with was the Arduino Pro Micro because of its small form factor and inexpensive cost. Also, it's uh, what the first page of Google told me to use, and I'm not willing to do any more research than that. Now, the more astute among you may have noticed that there are less pins on the Arduino Pro Micro than there are keys on the Mauling Hansen writing ball. At least last time I checked, 54 is a little bit more than 18. So how do we connect all 56 switches to this tiny board? You wouldn't be seeing this video if there wasn't a solution to this conundrum, so what is it? This is a button matrix. For those of you who don't know what a button matrix is, it's a matrix of buttons. So you can see that there are nine buttons, but only six wires. Wires. That's because each column gets a wire and each row gets a wire. Using a button matrix on the full scale pumpkin keyboard, we'll be able to shorten the amount of pins we need from 54 all the way down to 16. But if there's only 16 wires, how does the computer know what button we've pressed out of the 54 total? I just wanted an excuse to use the slide whistle there, but I can actually draw out how a button matrix works and how a computer knows what button we're pressing. I actually need to go grab chalk, so. All right, so let's say we have a square button matrix of nine buttons. So that would be three columns and three rows. And these would be our nine buttons. If I were to press this button down, it would power row one and column one. But there's one fatal flaw with this method, which is if I press this button down and this button down, so this and this end up being powered, you can see that these two buttons also have both their rows and their columns powered, which would mean the computer will also think that they're pressed. Now, there's a simple solution to this, and the solution is just to put a diode in between each button and each row. What a diode does is it prevents the electricity from flowing backwards, so you don't get electricity flowing up into the next button. Ah, my back. I shouldn't have done this on the fucking ground. Now, this is all a very simple explanation of how a button matrix works, but it's all we need to know in order to make a custom keyboard. I just wanted to use the slide whistle again, but how do we turn a button matrix into a keyboard? And the answer to that is QMK. If you're a mechanical keyboard enthusiast, you might be familiar with QMK if you've ever had to flash your keyboard's pre-made firmware. However, QMK can also be used to make custom firmware, which I'll probably need to do, seeing as there most likely isn't firmware that already exists for a typewriter embedded into a pumpkin. Using QMK, you have the opportunity to create the most ergonomic and optimized keyboard layout custom to your own typing preferences. For example, I've made the perfect keyboard for playing popular online video game, Wordle. By the way, in order to make the button matrix and make sure I remember which key goes where, I've had to take the most goddamn detailed notes I've ever taken in my life. And these aren't even for school. These are for a fucking project. With all that being said, now I actually have to turn those notes into reality and make this 54 key button matrix. This is gonna take forever. Please show your
48 hours and close to a lethal dose of caffeine later, we have this. This is a larger version of a button matrix. It has room for all 54 keys, plus two additional keys that I'll be using for shift and escape. The Mauling Hansen writing ball was produced in 1860 and so did not originally have these keys necessary in today's modern keyboards. Oh, but wait, this can't be a button matrix. There's no buttons on it. Where are the buttons? What do you take me for, a fool? I'll eat you. I've designed it so that all I have to do is attach these switches using these locking connectors on the back of the button matrix. It'll still be wired up as if it were directly soldered to the circuit board, but this gives me a little bit of extra room to play with. I did this for two reasons. One, if I were to solder these switches directly to the circuit board, the circuit board would be fucking massive. I mean, it wouldn't even be able to fit inside of a pumpkin. And two, the circuit board is flat and the pumpkin is round. And if you pass third grade, you'll know that those two things are different shapes. Now I guess all we gotta do is slap this button matrix into the pumpkin. Yeah, you like that little editing trick? Yeah, this thing was fucking hell to build. The inside of it is mainly just a mess of wires, and if I weren't so young, I would have had a fucking brain aneurysm at this point. Now you may have noticed that this is not the same pumpkin that we started with. To that I say, Yes it is. Regardless, it's done, and it works. I mean, it works about as well as a mechanical keyboard embedded into a pumpkin can work, but like, that's good enough for me. As long as it registers all the button presses correctly, I don't really care. Now, the way I embedded these switches into the pumpkin was actually to not embed them directly. First, I put the switch into a 3D printed cone, and then I embedded that cone into the pumpkin's flesh because it's much easier to drill a cone hole than a square hole. Most mechanical keyboard videos do a sound test on their keyboard, so I kind of feel obligated to do one of those. So if you're just here to see what it sounds like to type on this pumpkin at a normal speed, here you go. Now, despite how good that may have sounded, you are actually listening to me type complete gibberish. I mean, I average about like five words per minute on this keyboard, there's no way I can type that fast. However, normal sound tests are for boring loser nerds, so I'm going to use a much more accurate form of keyboard testing, type racer. Whew. Gotta enter a typing race. Two, one, where's the W key, where's the W key? Uh, H, A, V, oh my god, this idea worked way better in my head. E. Fuck, wait, no, it's an I. Delete. Space. T. O. Space. D. O. Space. T. O. M. Where's M? M. A. K. Space. T. Space. M. M. Space. Where's M? O. M. K. T. A. Delete. O. H. Where's H? Bro, I don't know where any of the keys are. Dude, this keyboard's gonna give me a panic attack. Why is spacebar not working? Oh, because that's not spacebar. I'm so far behind everyone. What the fuck? I'm not even gonna look up anymore. It's not even worth it. Out of time? Are you fucking kidding me? I would have I would have at least accepted the last place, but I didn't even get to finish. Well, I didn't do that great at Type Racer, and some of you may argue that's because the ergonomics of my keyboard are not good. But to that I say, what are good ergonomics? Your keyboard at home has a slew of ergonomic flaws. People have argued about everything from the keys being in the wrong order, to the keyboard not being in the shape of a U, to the keyboard not having keys nor being a board. In a way, my keyboard is no more or less ergonomic than the keyboard sitting in front of you. So instead of asking me what's wrong with my keyboard, I implore you to ask yourself what's wrong with yours. But also, yes, by using this keyboard, I have most definitely given myself carpal tunnel. You know, between this keyboard and my egg mouse, my gaming setup is slowly turning into ingredients for pumpkin pie. So sure you're